what's going on people um obviously a little different video here uh obviously not gaming related but um for those who may not know screw attack has released the latest death battle superman versus goku now if you're not into comic books and manga and anime like that might as well click off this video because this video is not for you this video is going to be like extremely nerdy this video is going to be nerdy as fuck you guys going to look at me and going to be like look at this fucking nerd you know but i'm a nerd you know and i'm cool with it but like i said you no know, if you're not into comic books you know dc marvel all that stuff anime manga might as well click off this video but um for those of you who may have been living under a rock basically the biggest you know the most widely debated thing you know in the history of nerds has been who will win in the fight superman versus goku and everybody has viewed screw attacks death battle as you know the deciding factor you know the the final say so you know the factual outcome of what would happen and <clears throat> the video was good you know it was funny it had really good analysis and they did use numbers and facts but the best way i could put this is that they used the wrong facts they kind of screwed up with the facts i'm going to explain exactly what i'm talking about in a second but there's a couple reasons why that death battle was off i'm going to explain to you guys why under the scenarios, you know, the situations they presented in that death battle, Goku should have won. He should have. I'm going to damage control, and I'm going to show you guys why Goku would beat Superman on a one-on-one -on -one fight. So let's get started. Now, firstly, in that death battle, right? And again, I'm saying he should have won in the scenarios they presented, you know, in the death battle. You see what I'm saying? Um... <clears throat> Basically, but my first main gripe and the reason why the whole complete fight is off is because they kept Goku in character, but they kept Superman out of character. And actually, they, not only did they keep Goku um, in character, but when it was inconvenient to him, they kept him out of character as well. So I'm, I'm going to get to that in a sec. But they kept Superman um, out of character. So when Superman is next to the crypt kryptonite and he's weak or whatever and Goku could kill him if he wanted to, Goku blows up the kryptonite so he could fight Superman at his full potential, you know, full power or whatever. That's what Goku always does, that's what fucking Vegeta always does, and that's why they extend the saga for another 50 episodes when they could have killed the villain right there. But anyways, um, <laughs> but at the end of the battle, Superman ends up being super powered by the sun to the point where he, he clashes with Goku and blows up the earth. You see what I'm saying? Now that is completely contradictory to Superman's character. And in that exact same video, in that exact same death battle, they stated that Superman would rather give up or sacrifice his own life to save Earth or to save others. They clearly state that we all know that that's Superman's character. So why would Superman allow himself to power up so much to where a punch from him would be able to destroy the Earth? Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Realistically, and I'm saying in the scenarios that Screw Attack and Death Battle presented, if they were on some random planet that didn't have any inhabitants, okay. But I'm saying if they were fighting on Earth, the same way that Death Battle had set up, Goku should have won. Because realistically, Superman would have given up. He would have been like, you know what? If I punch this guy, I'm going to destroy the Earth, so I'm just going to let him kill me. Superman would have done that. Superman is completely selfless. Completely selfless. So realistically, Goku's Dragon Punch in Super Saiyan 4 would have killed his ass because Superman wouldn't have allowed himself to be to um, basically um, charge up to where he's stronger than Super Saiyan 4 Goku to the point where he one punch blow up the planet. You see what I'm saying? Bam. That's the first reason why Goku would have won and that's the first reason why that whole battle was flawed. Now the second reason, and it's not as big as a reason, but the second reason is that in the video when they're doing Goku's analysis, they state that he's a fighting genius. You know, he's a martial arts genius. You know, but they also, but like when they portray him, you know, in the actual fight, they make him, they make him out to be this, you know, just complete total dumbass who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Now, yeah, Goku is stupid, but outside of fighting, you see what I'm saying? He's a dumbass. He's clueless when he's not fighting in everyday life but when it comes to in a fight he's a genius he's smart so when superman threw the power pole away he would have went and got that shit you see what i'm saying 
He, he would have done that. And also, he's a DBZ character. They can sense other people's power. You see what I'm saying? Power levels, you know, whatever. So when Goku was hitting him with the power pole, which is magic, we all know Superman is weak against magic. When he was hitting him with that power pole, he should have been able to sense Superman's power levels dropping or his um, solar power dropping or whatever. So he would have caught on, oh, he's weak against magic. There's something about my pole that's making him weak. So let me keep this pole and just smack the shit out of him with it. See what I'm saying? And he would have eventually end up impaling him with the pole or something like that. See what I'm saying? So that's another thing that was off. Also, they're both living on Earth, right? Superman's on TV, all this news about his rescues and stuff. Under the scenario that Death Battle presented, Goku should have known everything about Superman. See what I'm saying? Which is another fault in the Death Battle. Not only should Goku have known that he had, um, he, he was weak against magic, but he also should have known that he got power from the sun. Now, even if they didn't do this whole, they're both living on Earth and they're watching a, a, a news cast about Superman, even if it was just, they just randomly just, just find each other, they don't know anything about each other. Like I said, Goku and the other Z fighters in DBZ, any DBZ character, they could sense the power levels of everybody else. See what I'm saying? So, when Superman kept going higher, Goku would have been able to feel that he was getting stronger. You see what I'm saying? So, Goku would have caught on that, hey, this nigga is getting power from the sun. Let me kill his ass before he gets there. Get your pizza. Will you go get it? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, my sister came to the door telling me that the pizza guy was here. I did not hear the doorbell. I guess I was talking extra loud. But anyways, like I was saying, yeah. When Superman was flying up, you know, higher and higher, Goku wouldn't be able to feel that that nigga was getting stronger. And also, you can't really... You can't run from Goku, okay? I don't care how fast Superman is, you can't run from Goku. Because I forgot the dude's name, but the creator of DBZ or whatever, he said, instant transmission is instant. There is nothing faster than instant. So, it doesn't matter how fast Superman will fly away or whatever, instant is instant. Goku will just instant transmission, like he actually did in the death battle to catch Superman the first time. But for some reason, they made it to where he didn't do it the second time or the third time. But when Superman finally left the atmosphere and he was flying towards the sun, Goku could just instant transmission again, knocked his ass back down to Earth. That was another flaw in the death battle. You see what I'm saying? So, maybe if they were fighting on some, some random uninhabited, uninhabited place, or whatever, you know, yeah, then Superman would have probably killed him or whatever, but I mean, like, he would still have to get the, he would still have to get close to the sun. See what I'm saying? Which Goku really wouldn't allow him to do to begin with. So, I repeat, you know, Superman would beat Goku's destroy his ass if he gets close to a sun. But, see, that's the thing, like, like I've been saying this whole time, would Goku ever let him get close enough to where he can overcome a Super Saiyan 4 Goku. You see what I'm saying? Now here's the second, that, that was like the flaw with the whole, you know, if the battle scenarios and what would actually happen and how the characters really are and things like that. I just listed tons of reasons why Goku should have just beat his ass, destroyed his ass, right there, right? Now the, after they deem, you know, Superman the winner or whatever, they go into the analysis, you know, like strength and the durability and the speed and all that stuff, and they make a huge error um, when they do Goku's part. Now they do Superman's part and he can lift uh, 6.6 .6 quintillion, uh, you know, tons and he's, uh, he goes 9.4 billion kilometer, kilometers per hour or whatever, right? And then, but when they do Goku's analysis, they take his base strength from the Saiyan saga. The Saiyan saga, after he gets killed fighting Raditz. They use that Goku as his base strength when he's training with King Kai and trying to return to Earth before Vegeta and Nappa get there. And that's completely, see, see, see what I'm saying? So they use numbers and they use facts, but they use the lowest common denominator possible. You see what I'm saying? And that's, the, that's why their math was completely off. I see a lot of, you know, the, the DC and Superman fans can't argue with math, you know, DBZ fanboys. I'm not a DBZ fanboy, I'm a fan, but you know, I'm not 
you know, like a blind loyalist or anything like that. You know, I'm more of a Yu Yu Hakusho guy. It's the best anime in my opinion. But anyways, yeah, you guys see what I'm saying. They used Saiyan Saga Goku. Now, Saiyan Saga Goku to Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball GT Goku, do you know how much more powerful that nigga has gotten in between that time? You see what I'm saying? He went from getting his ass kicked by Frieza, ass kicked by Vegeta, to in GT, where he's in his kid form, he's playing around with Cell and Frieza at the same time. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They took the lowest common denominator. And the reason why I said in his kid form, because they actually state in the actual anime, in the actual creator stating himself, that um, when he's in his kid form, his body wasn't as strong as it was in his adult form. So that's not even saying adult Goku GT. Kid Goku in GT turns Cell and Frieza into child's play. You see what I'm saying? Now, Frieza can destroy a planet. Frieza can destroy a planet. Cell is like, what, a thousand times more powerful than Frieza? Because, I mean, we have, you know, the android saga where the androids were more powerful than Frieza, right? V Vegeta trooped straight through um, that, that fat android. I forget which android it was or whatever. You see what I'm saying? They beat the androids in that movie, uh, Super Android 13 or whatever. They beat Android 18 and 17, Super Android 17. They beat all the androids which are more powerful than Frieza, right? A bunch of times more powerful than Frieza. And then Cell is a bunch of times more powerful than the androids. So we have base Goku, not powered up, not even the white aura around him, none of that. Just regular kid GT Goku playing around with Cell and Frieza at the same time, and he defeats them, playing around with the smell on his face, laughing. See what I'm saying? So, basically, they took the base Goku from the Saiyan Saga, which could lift 40 tons, and then they did the uh, Super Saiyan 4 multipliers, and they uh, said that Super Saiyan 4, he could, weigh, he could lift 160,000 tons, which is completely off, because they based it off the Saiyan Saga Goku. If you use the GT Goku, you see what I'm saying? And then you did all the multipliers. Okay, so we, we can't really use solid numbers here because we don't know exactly how much stronger GT Goku is compared to Saiyan Saga Goku. But I'm, I think we could all pretty much, you know, agree that he's like literally like 10,000, you know, times more powerful. You see what I'm saying? He's thousands of times more powerful in GT as he is during the Sega, the Saiyan Saga, you see what I'm saying? And so then, multiply it by um, 50, that's Super Saiyan 1, as a 50 times uh, multiplier. Super Saiyan 2 has a 100 times multiplier because it's two times as strong as Super Saiyan 1. Super Saiyan 3 is a, a four times multiplier of two, which means that it's a 400 times multiplier. Then number four is a 10 times multiplier, 10 times uh, level 3, that's 4,000 times the base strength. So, GT, right, which is already 10,000 times more powerful than Saiyan Saga, right? Then multiply that by 4,000. I, I haven't done the exact math because that's, that's too big of numbers. I'm not going to do all that. Maybe I'll do it in the annotations. But you guys get the point. Um, I can't say for sure, but from what I just said, it sounds like that he'd be able to weigh, uh, lift more than 6.6 .6 quintillion tons. You see what I'm saying? And then they did the speed, they tested the speed, which was also Saiyan Saga, whatever. 64, um, 64,343,057, right? And then Superman is, uh, 9.4 billion. Again, if you take GT you know, Goku, and then you do Super Saiyan 4, I'm pretty sure that'll go over 9.4 billion. I'm not sure. One of you guys out there do the math. And then they talked about durability. That was all kind of stupid to begin with because they based it off of Jero's bomb, which we don't know whether or not that would have actually been able to defeat Goku. And they point out in the video themselves that um, the bomb uh, couldn't necessarily not been meant to kill Goku, but actually just to blow up Earth 
which would kill Goku because he supposedly can't breathe out of space, although he can. DBZ has always kind of contradicted itself with that because it showed Saiyans flying around in space before, but then it has villains like Frieza saying he can't survive out of space. But yeah, we don't know if the bomb was just powerful enough to just destroy the planet or to destroy Goku. But even if it was, or oh, because it was intended to kill Goku, that doesn't mean it was actually powerful enough to do it. You see what I'm saying? And not to mention, again, that was a bomb intended to kill early Goku. Not GT Goku. By GT, he's a billion times more durable. Durable. You see what I'm saying? So, that was all facts. Okay. Goku should've, would've won. Realistically, I just provide the evidence. If you guys think otherwise, hey, I'm up for debate. Go ahead in the comment sections. Uh, this is going to be entertaining, but I'll see you fools later.